I was very capable of playing very violently. But you did that so you could accomplish what you needed to accomplish. What's an example of violent play? Maybe you push his face mask up and try and break his jaw. <laughs> Gouge his throat. <laughs> if you're going to survive as a defense lineman, the people who are opposite you have to be afraid of you. Playing football was fun. Having success at football was fun. Uh, it was financially rewarding. My primary goal was to further my education, all of which somehow we managed to accomplish. Go ahead and win the Grey Cup. A big parade and all that shit. I'm sitting there. <clears throat> I got to write the bar exam in four days. And I haven't looked at a book in a month. <laughs> okay, how are we going to get this done? Which is, uh, so you sat down at your desk with your books, you got an intravenous hookup for your coffee, and, <laughs> and you smoked cigarettes and, so that you could uh, endure that. What do you do when the cheering stops? So why did you do gold mining? That sent down to Guyana as a uh, young lawyer on a, um, uh, as part of a due diligence team. And uh, so there were opportunities to do exploration and develop projects. I said, well, I'm doing this for clients. I might as well be able, I think I can do it for myself. Did you want to get rich? No, I want it to be successful. What does that mean to you? You're going to accomplish something, respect from your peers, and have enough money to actually do what you want to do. What does rich mean to you? Every 10 years, BHP decided to get out of the gold business. So I got a phone call from an old friend of mine, Hugo Dummett. He says, we're getting out of the gold business. Dave, get your ass down to San Francisco. we got to have a chat. $80 million, you're going to have the whole lot. Friedland and Bristol were in there, too. Uh, and, uh, and, and, was Harmon, and so was Harmony. None of us had enough balls. So I got Hope Bay. Friedland got Mongolia. Bristol got West Africa. And Harmony got East Africa. If you'd have kept that package together, you'd be the second largest copper company, and you'd be arguing with Dumont about who was the biggest coal company. You have to be able to identify extremely good assets that are unloved for some reason. Then you have to figure out, okay, how are we going to put all these things together? And the other thing is, you never lie to the shareholders. Well, and there are a whole lot of people in Vancouver who are going to tell you a good story, uh, and they're going to have some short-term success. Uh, but that's what it's going to be, because they don't have any intention of going through the whole cycle. I believe that when you take uh, your shareholders' money and you say you're going to do this, and if um, it's not successful... My job is to fix that. Um, and I'm not going to roll all the stock back. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to get a new property, put it in there and wipe you out. And there are shareholders a new sleeper started almost 15 years ago. If you want to be in a crisis, you got to tell your shareholders at that time, they were the largest gold company in the world. It's full of shit, and you're right. Yeah. That's a hard sell. But we said, fuck it. We know we're right. Oco is going to be probably the best gold mine in South America. The date of the discovery hole, so the date we're actually going to go 
poor gold and be in commercial production. That whole period is six years. I know people that have been in fucking uh, permitting for more than six years. Between when I was 21 and 30, I had to talk to the media all the time. Um, and it got me extremely cynical. I'd rather accomplish something, whatever whatever milestone it is, let the other people talk about it. There's an old saying that success has a thousand fathers and failure but one. You want your team to be successful. You, you can't be a narcissist and drag everything in yourself, and it's me, because quite frankly, it's never you. Uh, it, it's the efforts of a whole bunch of people that are put together. You know, you can, if you can make sure you got the right people, you, you get the brag at, at the end. But I've been to enough mind moments that what I do know is the people that are standing on the stage taking credit for it, there's an inverse proportional relationship to how loud and long they're talking and to what they actually contributed. But that's just me. How is the junior company business like pro football? Very unforgiving. <laughs> Anything else? You're going to fail. 100% guaranteed in both. The real question is, what are you going to do after you fail? Uh, okay. You knock me down. I'm going to get up. And it's it's what and next time I'm gonna knock you down. I actually I'm not finished. My, I think there's more things to do. I still haven't figured out what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I mean, I do these things because I like moving the Rubik's Cube around and trying and trying to create the success. Um do I need it for the money? No. I refuse to quit. If you believe in yourself, you will find a way to make it happen. 